you and I have ever discussed this, but I had a patient who came to me years ago. She knew that I do a lot of work with rejuvenation, platelet-rich fibrin, exosomes, all of those things, and she came to me crying. She had had a surgical labiaplasty with a local Boca Raton surgeon, and she had lost sexual function. She couldn't feel as much. She was not orgasming. It had done a lot of damage, and she was devastated. And it broke my heart to see her because she was very young, in her early 20s, perhaps. And she was so upset. She said, can you do anything to help me? Welcome to America's number one sexuality podcast, Dr. Sex Fairy. I am Dr. Kaval Bhava, America's favorite sex doctor, and I am here to transform your life. The Dr. Sex Fairy podcast is now audio and video, so don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Dr. Sex Fairy, as well as subscribing on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Today, we are tackling a topic that's increasingly relevant in the realm of female cosmetic surgery and sexuality, labiaplasty. It has become the most common female genital cosmetic surgery, but did you know that there's a non-surgical option gaining ground? Labiaplasty, traditionally a surgical procedure, has been associated with nerve damage, loss of sensation, scarring, and infection. That is why I have steadfastly refused to perform surgical labiaplasties in my office. That said, labiaplasty has seen a new dawn with the advent of my non-surgical method called Bava Lift, a radiofrequency-based labiaplasty without cutting. It is a revolutionary approach that not only reshapes but rejuvenates the tissue, making it healthier and more resilient. Add platelet-rich fibrin matrix and exosomes to it, and you no longer have loose lips, sinking ships. However, this is about more than just aesthetics. It is functional and therapeutic as well. But first, let's address the elephant in the room. The American College of Obstetrics and Gynecology, ACOG, has raised concerns about the influence of idealized images of genital anatomy, often propagated by pornography, on the rising demand for labiaplasties. I am hardly the flag bearer for pornography, but I do feel that it is crucial to recognize that women's choices about their bodies aren't solely influenced by external factors like media or societal norms. It is not just about being brainwashed by unrealistic standards. Women have diverse reasons for opting for labiaplasty, ranging from comfort, aesthetics, to even personal empowerment. And speaking of personal stories, today we are joined by Mallory, a vibrant woman in her early 30s, who stands as a testament to this. Mallory hasn't experienced childbirth or the effects of menopause, yet she chose to undergo the Bava Lift non-surgical labiaplasty, as well as a topical treatment that counteracts the darkening of intimate skin over time. Her story is one of choice, empowerment, and the pursuit of personal well-being. So stay tuned as we dive deep into Mallory's journey, explore the nuances of non-surgical labiaplasty, and debunk some common myths surrounding female cosmetic genital surgery. It's going to be an enlightening conversation. Welcome to the Dr. Sex Fairy Podcast. Mallory, it's wonderful to have you here. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you for doing this for our viewers because I'm sure they will gain so much from hearing about your story, your experiences. Let's start with why you chose the Bawa Lift non-surgical labioplasty. Well, really, when I heard about the Bawa Lift, what attracted me most to it is that it was an in-and-out procedure. Um, it didn't require surgery, limited downtime. Um, I could come in and get the surgery done, and, you know, in a little less two weeks, I'd see improvements. I'm really excited about my results. Did you look into the issues with surgical labiaplasty as well? Yes, and that has always been a concern of mine, not only just due to, you know, just cutting that area, but the risk involved with infection, but then also um, potential loss of sexual function, um, so when I heard about 
a scarless labioplasty in and out without having to do surgery. I was like, sign me up. <laughs> and then plus with you doing it, I was like, double sign me up. That's awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Now, I don't know if you and I have ever discussed this, but I had a patient who came to me years ago. She knew that I do a lot of work with rejuvenation, platelet rich fibrin, exosomes, all of those things. And she came to me crying. She had had a surgical labiaplasty with a local Boca Raton surgeon, and she had lost sexual function. She couldn't feel as much. She was not orgasming. It had done a lot of damage, and she was devastated. And it broke my heart to see her because she was very young, in her early 20s, perhaps. And she was so upset. She said, can you do anything to help me? And I had to be honest with her, and I had to tell her, listen, what I do will help you, but whether or not you get sensation back fully, I, I can't guarantee that. I doubt it. Because once you cut nerves like that, you know, it's a crapshoot what happens afterwards. I am so glad that I can do this for women now because we're not cutting. So you don't have to deal with the scar and scar tissue. It's not just the outside scarring. Remember, every time you cut, there's internal scarring as well. And what that does depends from person to person, whether it's just you know, a little bit of loss of sensation or a lot of loss, um, you know, it, it depends really. Right. So now we are doing this without causing scar tissue formation. We are doing it without causing external scar formation. And we are not only improving the look of the labia, we're improving the function of the labia because we're actually plumping it up from the inside out with radiofrequency treatment. This is not just external radiofrequency, as you know, you had the procedure. We are going internally but non-surgically. So it's not non-invasive, but it is non-surgical. Right. Because right. any true transformation is going to involve some disruption, some treatment. Sure. You know, these people offer you the sun, moon, and stars by saying, oh, we'll wave this wand over you and you'll be just great and you'll have the vagina of your dreams and everything will look beautiful and rah, rah. But that's not how the world works. That said, the Bava lift non-surgical labiaplasty is so, so easy compared to surgical labiaplasty. Not only do we not have all the side effects, the downtime for sex is minimal. It's We always tell people, give us two weeks of no sex. And with a surgical labiaplasty, it's eight weeks. That's two months of no sex. So if you're trying to do this to improve your sex life, well, you're going to take a bit of a hit before it gets any better. <laughs> right, right. No, that was a big concern of mine as well. And that was another reason why I was so attracted to this procedure. And then we also did another procedure on you. In fact, we at Bava Medical were the first in the country to offer this procedure. It's a biostimulator that improves the appearance of your skin in the genital area. So you underwent that. In fact, I believe you are a very first patient. You may be, oh yes, you are the first person in the U.S. to have had this treatment. Oh wow, I didn't know that. Yes, I had to think about it for a minute because you were right at the cusp of you know, cutting edge technology when it comes to that. You were the first. Yeah, yeah, no, and I, I certainly am reaping the rewards for sure. I'm so thankful for my results and I, I couldn't be happier. So thank you. Oh, you're very welcome. In fact, soon after this, I lectured about this in Las Vegas at the Vegas Cosmetic Surgery Conference. And I talked about how wonderful our results have been with this treatment. Because again, it's non-invasive. It's in and out, no downtime. And we improve the color and the appearance of uh, your skin down under. Right, right. So win-win situation. Exactly, exactly. I think nowadays there's such a stigma about talking about this, but um, or there was, and now it's becoming more and more popular in, in today's news and, and knowing that women don't have to be stuck with what they have. There are so many options and it doesn't have to be this big ordeal. Their partner doesn't even have to know about it. They can go in and see you and um, leave with an incredible result and feel so much better. So, And I'm glad you brought that up because so many people are probably looking at you wondering, why does this young, beautiful woman feel the need to do something like this? And it's not about what's apparent to people. Wear and tear happens at a young age. And also, I have always talked about the importance of preservation. So you are preserving things and improving yourself before it's even apparent to anybody else or even in many cases to yourself. You are preserving tissue so that you don't have 
you know, the loose lips that sink ships. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, it's, it's, I see it like it's going, it's like going to the dentist. Um, you know, you have to continue to go and, and do things to take care of yourself before it's an issue, before you lose a tooth, before you are too deep where, you know, you are having surgical, you do need surgery. And then you also had a treatment to help preserve function. Let's talk right. about that. You did the Barbatone treatment to improve your pelvic floor and vaginal tightness and all of that. Yes, yes. I'm I'm so grateful for that procedure too. Um, you know, just like I said, I mean, it's all about restoring and, and keeping that that area strong. And and I didn't even know truly the the benefits of it. I was familiar with the type of benefits that I would receive and experience from the procedure, um, but nowhere did I know how great I would feel from just the, the in and out procedure, the one procedure that I had, the, the tone. And how has that helped your sex life? It has certainly improved things. Um, it's definitely tighter down there. Um, and, you know, yeah. You look happy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no complaints. No complaints for sure. That is a very happy face. Yes. Now, tone itself is a painless procedure. We inserted a device into you, and then you just hung out and played on your phone for a bit, and then you walked out and did your thing for the day. There was no downtime whatsoever. Yeah. And the benefits are obvious at this point. And you had just a handful of treatments. I often tell people that Kegels are not as simple as they're cracked up to be. Everybody thinks that they just, you know, Kegel away at every red light like they always tell you. And that somehow that's going to magically transform your vagina. While Kegels are beneficial, they cannot compare to the energy given to the area through the treatment itself. You know, it's not the lazy woman's Kegel, it's the smart woman's Kegel. Absolutely, absolutely. And I, you know, I've, I've done the Kegels, but they nowhere compare to the Bawa tone. Um, the Bawa tone put me to work, but it's not like I was sore afterwards or I just immediately started feeling the benefits. And the other thing that we haven't discussed, probably because you're so young and haven't experienced this yet, is incontinence. Mm -hmm. And incontinence is something that is a pandemic all its own. I often talk about the different silent pandemics that we are experiencing as a society that nobody wants to talk about. ED. It is so common, but most men don't want to discuss it. Urinary incontinence is not a sexy topic. When women dribble urine, they don't want to discuss it with their doctor. Many of them don't even want to admit it to themselves. In fact, I often ask women if they suffer from incontinence and the overwhelming majority say no. But when I clarify and I specify and I say, well, when you sneeze, when you cough, do you dribble a little? Well, yeah, but that's not incontinence. And I say, oh, yes, ma'am, it is. So this actually helps with that as well because it strengthens your pelvic floor. Absolutely. It, I read a fact the other day um, that more diapers are purchased for adults than children in the U.S. That's true. And in countries like Japan, where they have a large older population, the numbers are sky high. Wow. It makes sense. The yeah. longer you live, the more you're going to see this in society. And by doing things preemptively like you have, you have a much better chance of not being one of those diaper purchasers. <laughs> I sure hope so. So Mallory, non-surgical labiaplasty is still labiaplasty. As I mentioned, it's not exactly non-invasive, but it's certainly nothing compared to surgery. It sounds scary. Let's talk about your experience with it. Sure, sure. Um, from start to finish, it was seamless. You know, I came in and... and we numbed. I was under local anesthetic, and um, it was in 15 minutes we started the procedure. And the whole time, honestly, I didn't feel anything. <laughs> you kept asking, like, you sure you don't feel anything? Are you good to go? And I mean, I didn't feel a single thing. Um, and I mean, it was it was over before I even knew it began. Um, you know, I you talked me through everything, where you were actually making, you know, the different areas tighter, where you were taking the probe. Um, you made me feel, you know, so comfortable, Astera, the whole team. Um, and 
like I said, before I knew it, it was, it was already over. And I mean, afterwards I walked out, um, I was still numb, of course, but, um, you know, two weeks. Numb is good in this case. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Um, and I was a good patient for two weeks. You know, I, I didn't have sex. I didn't work out, um, you know, but I didn't experience any bleeding, any swelling, any discomfort at all. Um, and I didn't prescribe any pain meds to you. Right, that's right. Yeah, nothing. And not even like Tylenol or anything. Um, I was I was really surprised. I was at least expecting to take Tylenol, but no, nothing. How about that? Yeah. I am very careful about pain. I don't like experiencing it, and I certainly don't like causing it. And that's why here at Bava Medical, I have so many different things I do for pain control, from cryotherapy to laughing gas, not your you know, mom's dentist laughing gas. This is the good stuff. And you can actually drive off to that. And numbing. There's numbing and then there's numbing. We use very high quality numbing for the topical creams. And in this case, I kept asking you because I never assume that anybody is fully numb because, you know, the nerves don't read the textbook. So just because I have completed all the steps required, it doesn't really mean that I should assume that you are fully numb and that you stay numb. That's why I keep asking. And it's important that patients aren't traumatized by this. I don't want them to have horrible thoughts when they think about me. <laughs> Just good thoughts, happy thoughts. You always say, you know, um, that you rather under promise and over deliver. And honestly, you certainly did. Um, you've always done amazing work, but I'm really, really happy about this procedure. And I'm so grateful that I have the opportunity to talk about her today. You are helping more women than you know. In fact, even the men listening, are now going to be better equipped to help their partner. Right. Because when you know better, you do better. And the best part about this that we haven't really even touched upon is that you are more liberated sexually when you are confident about how you look. Absolutely. And I always say you've got to love all your lips. <laughs> That's true. When you feel better, you are going to be so much more able to let go when it comes to that intimate moment, you are more likely to orgasm because you are just feeling so much better about yourself. And I've often said that the most important sexual organ is actually your brain. So good times ahead, my friend. Let's talk about the one where we did the collagen biostimulator, the topical treatment. So we basically painted on the substance on the outside mm -hmm. and you hung out for just maybe five minutes or so, yeah. if that. And then we put some skincare on you afterwards, and the results were pretty immediate, weren't they? Absolutely, absolutely. I was impressed. I was. I have never had a procedure like that, and I, I didn't, you know, expect a whole lot. Um, but knowing knowing you, you blew my expectations. And you did that three more times mm -hmm. in the interest of transparency. So you did four total treatments, and the results maintained. Absolutely. Absolutely. So better color, plumper tissue. It was really a game changer. The before and afters from from that procedure, then still now after the um, the labiaplasty or non-surgical labiaplasty, um, you know, you definitely can see that, you know, it continued to improve. So you're basically telling us that your area down under is never really going to age like the average woman then, is it? Not if I keep coming to you. <laughs> so what else? could I do to continue the results, continue my journey here with you, as well as um, other treatments that I could recommend men, my friends and family? I think a very good treatment for you would be radiofrequency microneedling of the vagina. People I know look at that like, whoa, <laughs> you, look, you look so shot. Wait a minute, what? Now, the thing is that everybody thinks of radiofrequency microneedling as something for the face and now with Morpheus even for the body. But... It is something that can actually be done inside the vagina with great results. And we have the world's only device that can do that. It does radiofrequency microneedling on the inside. Now, we do use some numbing, but it's not really a painful procedure. It's quite comfortable. And that is helping put that radiofrequency energy deeper into the tissue than you would just with a surface radiofrequency treatment. So those needles are actually delivering that energy where it really needs to be deep down inside. So basically, those needles are putting energy deep down into every layer of the vagina. 
And that is helping you rejuvenate in its truest sense from the inside out. You cannot get that kind of effect with just a surface radiofrequency treatment. I mean, don't get me wrong, we do that as well. But I think the best approach is to combine both of these forms of radiofrequency. So you have the topical, and then you have the deeper rejuvenation as well. Wow. So that's a great thing to do. Then for certain women, vaginal CO2 is a wonderful option, and we offer that as well. Now, in my opinion, if you have severe incontinence, that may be something that requires surgical intervention. But for most women who have mild to moderate incontinence, what we can do with CO2, what we can do with radiofrequency microneedling of the vagina, this stuff can be life-altering and non-invasive. Wow. Wow. And what does that do from a, um, a sexual experience? Well, the tighter the better, right? <laughs> and this actually tightens the vagina. It also makes you more lubricated. And vaginal dryness is another issue that's affecting more and more women, especially as they age. So tighter, wetter vaginas. That's a good thing. Wow. And and that's not surgical? I mean, you don't have, you're not a bleeding anything. You're not no. cutting anything. No. Wow. And how many procedures would you need? Depending on the treatment, anywhere from, I would say, one to three, depending on what we're doing. And then there's the barber shot. That is where... I take blood from your arm, spin it down into platelet-rich plasma, and then I concentrate it further into platelet-rich fibrin matrix, PRFM, and I can inject that right into the clitoris. Because over time, the clitoris is shrinking as well. And given the fact that most women are orgasming externally, not internally, preserving clitoral function and sensation is pivotal to a woman's sexual experience. So we can do that painlessly at that. Like, is there an area that you can't treat? <laughs> Eyeballs? I don't know. Wow. Wow. That's, yeah. that's pretty incredible. Yeah. Wow. So what is the, what is PRFM, the matrix? What makes it the matrix? PRP is very watery and it's a great substance, but it only stays in the area for about a day. Now, when we add calcium chloride to it and concentrate it, it's really a very easy switch for us to do. And what happens is that we inject it still liquid, but it becomes more of a gel under the surface. And that stays in the area theoretically for about seven days. Now think about what that does. One day versus seven days, that's a lot more rejuvenation. So we are using your growth factor to stimulate your stem cells. Our body can do that. that that's pretty incredible. Isn't it? Wow. Okay. And in some cases, we're also adding exosomes that come from umbilical cord tissue. Now, people get very squeamish sometimes when you mention umbilical cord tissue. But, you know, when the baby is born, that part of the body is just discarded. But there is some great rejuvenation to be had from there. So what we are doing is we are getting exosomes that come from that area. Think about what a baby does. You know, everything's firing, everything is growing. And you want, you know, that brand new, Vagina, you want that brand new clitoris. Sure. And this helps me get that. There is no blood involved. I don't have to test your blood type. Wow. And there is no DNA involved. So you're not getting anybody's DNA. You're not getting their blood. You're simply getting these messengers that really amp up the rejuvenation process. Wow. So it's like, you know, the barber shot and steroids. Wow. Wow. That's pretty incredible. I, I honestly have not heard anyone, you know, offering that procedure. So probably I'll be in next week for that one. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. And that brings us to the end of another enlightening episode of the Dr. Sex Fairy podcast. A heartfelt thank you to Mallory for sharing her journey with us today and to all of you, our listeners, for joining me on this deep dive into the world of non-surgical labiaplasty and female sexual empowerment. Remember, whether it's through surgical or non-surgical means, the choice to modify one's body is deeply personal and multifaceted. It is about comfort, aesthetics, and above all, personal empowerment. Here at the Dr. Sex Fairy podcast, I advocate for informed choices, health, and happiness in all aspects of sexuality and personal well-being. Thank you for spending time with me on this episode of the Dr. Sex Fairy podcast. 
If you are watching this on YouTube, don't forget to leave questions and comments. I will answer them personally. Make sure you like this video and subscribe to my channel Dr. Sex Fairy so that you never miss a video. If you are listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or elsewhere, do subscribe to the Dr. Sex Fairy podcast. We have more great content and guests to come. Check out my super hit TikTok account, Dr. Sex Fairy, and my Instagram, The Real Dr. Sex Fairy. Stay updated, stay informed, and let's continue to break down barriers and explore the fascinating world of sexuality together. Until next time.